Hello everyone and welcome to Sun Codex. In this tutorial we'll deconstruct the MOOC DVAM and we'll try to redesign it inside PD Vanilla. Since this tutorial will be really long, I'm going to cut it into smaller videos so that it will be easier for you to follow and easier for me to manage. With that said, let's jump to the overview. DFAM stands for Drummer from Another Mother and is a semi-modular analog percussion synthesizer. When we talk about semi-modular, we refer to this patch bay which allows you to link this synth to others and combine the feature of the one into the other. For the purpose of this video, we'll not replicate the patch bay, but who knows, maybe it could be the topic for a future video. Now let's start with the sound sources. They are located in this left corner and we have a VCO1, VCO2 and noise generator. VCO1 has control over frequency, over the waveform type, so we can decide whether to use a square wave or a triangular. Of course, the same is for the VCO2. Here we have FM amount, so the amount of frequency modulation to be applied to uh, both VCO1 and 2. For DK, I want to talk about it later, so let's skip this for now and jump into the filter section. We have a standard control over the cutoff frequency and the resonance, and we can select if we want to use a high pass or a low pass filter. Finally, the signal is sent to the main output where we have a knob for the main volume. DFAM has three envelopes. The first one controls the frequency. So it's a DK envelope applied to the VCOs. Then we have a DK for the cutoff frequency. And finally a DK for the voltage controlled amplitude so that we can shape both the amplitude of the signal, its timbre using the filter cutoff frequency and its frequency. We can then set the amount of envelope uh, modulation to VCO1 and 2 using this knob as well for the filter using this knob right here. Talking about percussion synth and rhythm, we need to talk about the sequencer, which is an eight step sequencer with two rows. The first one controls the pitch of your oscillators and the second one, the velocity of your sound. Each row has eight steps. The pitch knobs uh, can control the frequency and the full range is of eight octaves, so you have a huge range of frequencies. Then we have the velocity knob that can be turned uh, all the way to the left so that you can stop a sound, you can set its volume to zero. And of course, you can crank it up to generate accents and define really cool rhythms. The tempo knob defines the main tempo at which the sequencer is playing and you can start and stop uh, your sequencer using this button or if you don't want to use the sequencer you can trigger the synth manually using this uh, button right here. Here we are inside PD where I'm going to build the oscillator section using band limited waveforms. If you want to know more about that have a look at the video you can find both on top here and in the video description below. Now we can start by generating an array. Uh, the first array 
is going to store the square waveform. So I simply name it square. And I set its size to uh, 512 plus 3. So 515. We'll understand in a few moments why we need these three extra points. To draw the waveform inside the array, we can use an internal message that starts with a semicolon. We declare the name of the array, the method we are going to use, which is sign sum, the number of samples. And from here, we are going to list all the harmonics amplitudes. We can now click uh, over the message and here we have our waveform. Now, if you have a closer look, you'll see that here we are not touching the bottom uh, of the array as well for the top. So the signal is not normalized, the waveform is not normalized between minus one and one, which is the range of the array. To fix that, we need to write the name of the array, normalize, and the value at which we want to normalize the signal. And here we are. Now we can generate the tab OSC4 tilde, which is a node, a wavetable lookup that reads throughout, throughout a, an array. So we need to declare to specify the array name here, which is square. We can have a look at its help. Uh, what it says here is that for good results, use 512 points for up to about 15 partials or 32 times n partials rounded up to a power of two for more than 15 partials. I want to use a decent amount of partials of harmonics, surely more than 15. So I need to take 32 and multiply it by the number of partial uh, I want to use. Since I want to use uh, 32 partials, here I have all the 32 I need. We need to take 32, multiply it by the number of partials, 32. And this is the number of points we have to write inside of the array. So 32 times 32 is 1024. Send the message to the array. And if we inspect its properties, we'll now see that the array size has changed from uh, 512 to uh, 1027. We have three extra points because tab osc4 needs three extra points to generate a clear wave without any problem or distortions now we can generate a number box connected to a sig tilde so we convert the numerical value to an audio signal we send it to the tab osc4 that can be finally connected to a dac but before i want to use a, a multiplication sign so that we can control the volume. Uh, the number box can be normalized from zero to one. And here we have the DAC. Now let's set the frequency to something like this. We turn on the DSP system. Great, now let's do the same process to generate a triangular wave. So we can generate a new array, triangle. We can then copy this message. Let's bring it down here. Let's change the name to triangle. And here we need to change all the uh, harmonics amplitude. We change the name for uh, the normalization, so triangle. 
and here we have our triangular waveform. To change waveform through Tab OSC, we need to set two messages. The first one set square, and the second one set triangle. From here, we can add just a plus, a waveform visualizer. We can do so using a tab right tilde with the name of the array we want to write in. So I think I'm going to call it display. We take the audio signal, we send it to the tab right, and we update the tab right using a metro. Let's say every 100 milliseconds, and then we use a toggle to turn the uh, metro on and off. Now we need to generate the array, so let's call it display. And since my uh, waveform uh, array length was 124, we can write that number. That's all for today's video. In the next episode, we'll see how to build a percussive envelope for the amplitude and how to trigger it manually. So let's stay tuned. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.